We've built a console application that can interface with the YouTube reporting API and download our reports. Now it's time to take those thousands of flat files and get them into a data structure that Power BI can consume. I'm going to be taking an iterative de approach to, to development here. I don't really know enough about the data that's in the reports, nor do I know exactly how I want to use this data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first get the data into a persistent staging area, and I'm going to use the staging area as the source for Power BI as my first step to understanding the data. Then later, I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually model that data in a way that it's going to integrate with the rest of my warehouse. So I'm, I'm going to be using LeapFrog BI to automate all of the ETL development here. All right, so I've already built a project or start created a new project called YouTube Analytics. In my case, I'm deploying the SQL Server 2016. Of course, you can set this up however you'd like. Um, I have um, a three lifecycle environment set up here, dev, test, and prod. Um, I'm going to be just working in dev uh, during this video. And um, I've actually already built this project out, but I'm going to go ahead and redo a couple of things to show you um, how I approach this problem. Now, let me go over here and show you what we have. The, the uh, console application that's downloading reports for us is creating a bunch of CSV files. So in my um, folder here that I'm presenting, I now have 3,525 different or 23 different reports plus a couple of folders. I need to get these reports into a database so that I can actually um, consume them using Power BI. Now there's actually only 18 different reports here. There's so many, there's a lot of different, a lot of files because each file contains only one report's single day um, worth of data. So every report, um, since I'm getting data for, uh, I don't know how long actually, maybe six months, each report is going to have 100 or 200 files um, that contain the exact same schema, but different days of data. So really I have 18 different layouts to deal with. And again, we're dealing with flat files here, so there's no metadata. I can't automatically extract from these files their structure. So I'm going to have to do that myself. The way I do that is I go over to LeapFrog BI and I go to Stage, New Component. Now again, the type of component we're dealing with here is going to be a flat file component because we're picking up um, a flat file. So I scroll down, go to Flat File, and I download this um, template. Okay, so I have the template downloaded. I've imported it into a Visual Studio SSIS project, and I have the package opened up here. It's just an SSIS package. And this particular package is, is, um, is again, set up to define the metadata that's in a flat file. So when I go down to the connection manager and I look at the, the existing connection called source, I need to complete this connection manager to tell the package what my flat files um, structure looks like. So I'm going to first navigate to that file and I'll just arbitrarily, I'll do channel annotation. That's the one I'm going to work with here. I know that this file is a um, delimited file, so I filled out the header area here appropriately. And then when I look at the columns, I can see what we have um, for data. Now, I, again, these are comma separated files. This is a comma delimited file. And basically I've gone through this little wizard here and filled out all the information that I need to fill out. Um, I will say that I made some, some decisions here like um, generally all of the, um, the uh, integers I've set to be a, just a regular integer, um, an I4 assigned integer, and any, um, any floating values, I set those to float. All of the string values, such as the channel ID, uh, the video ID, and any text, I went ahead and set that to a length of 50. That seems to be appropriate just from, from glancing at the data. I could be wrong. I may have to come back and, and change some of this, but for now, it seems to be just fine. Okay, so once I'm done filling out the connection manager, then um, all I need to do is save the profile. I can run it if I want to. And I'll see that the, the package is successful. In this case, I only had 38 rows that um, were profiled. All right, so now that I have done that, 
I need to repeat that process 18 times in this case because I have 18 different layouts. And I've done that. You can see them here. I have each of the different layouts um, in profiles. So now I can go over to Leapfrog BI and I can create a stage component using that profile. So I'm doing a flat file stage component here. I'm going to select S1000. And this is going to be a temporary one because, again, I've already done this. So I'm just going to call this temp. You would call this something to reflect the name of your report. It's your sourcing. And now I'm navigating over to that profile that I generated. Uh, let's say minor over here. And then I'm going to ask it to create a new connection for the source because the source connection is actually just a, a folder structure here. It's a folder, um, a, a directory path, excuse me. So I'm going to have it extract that from the package that I'm uploading to create a connection. And then for my destination, I'm going to use a connection I've already created called stage, target stage. And then I'll upload that and save the component. All right, so once I've um, profiled all 18 of my reports and I've created 18 different stage components using that, those uh, 18 profiles, I'll have, um, as you see here, 18 different stage components. So all the channel prefixed names you see here are channel reports, and then I have another six playlist reports. So this is good. I mean, we, now we have stage components that can consume a, um, a specific source file, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to, we want to consume all of the files that are channel annotation reports, um, at the same time. And we want to stage them all together. We don't want to create 3,500 different staging processes. So, um, how we're going to take care of that is we're going to use this multi-file stage component. So if I go to stage, uh, new component, and I scroll down here, there's a component type called multi-file stage and I'll go ahead and download and save this Excel file which is a template I need to fill out. Okay so I have the template downloaded and I've opened it up here. I've already filled it out. I want to go over how I filled out this template so you can understand what it's actually going to accomplish for us. Every record, every row in this template is defining a single multi-file stage process. So it's going to um, uh, pick up a number of files for us and stage them into a single destination um, by, uh, by us providing these inputs. So let's just take a look at what we're, we're going to tell the system. The first field is just whether or not the, the, um, the row is active or not. And then the next set of fields here are defining which stage component do we want to use for this multi-file stage process. So in this first row, I'm using the channel annotation stage component. And what's actually going to happen is that this multi-file stage process is going to run that same component over and over and over again as many times as it needs to to process every file that we um, decide to include in this multi-file stage process. Now, let's go to the next section. The next section here is talking about where are the files we want to pick up and process and what is their name. So the location here you can see is in the F file YouTube directory path. The name that we're dealing with in this very first multi-file stage um, um, template is channel annotation A1 and then in star for wildcard.csv. So anything in our uh, pickup location that meets that, um, that, that, uh, that naming standard is going to be included in this multi-file stage process. So if I, if I come over here, Actually, let me copy this and let's go to that location, uh, which is F file YouTube and let's just search for that string. So I can see right there that anything that meets this condition is going to be included in this multi-file stage process. And I know that every one of these files have the same layout. They're all the same report. It's just different days of data for this particular report. All right, so then that takes care of this purple section. Now I'm going to scroll over here. In the red section, what we're, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, after we process a file, what do we want to do with it? 
And what I want to do is I want to move it to a processed location, meaning this file's done, it's processed. I don't want to process it again tomorrow. I'm going to move it over to another location. And in my case, I'm moving it to a success folder, which is just the same path as a pickup location, F file YouTube, and a subfolder called success. There's a few different options here, like do you want to move to a process location? Do you want to clear it? And so on. You can fill this out however you like. In my case, I'm just simply moving the file to the process location. And then we have the exact same thing for an error location. So if a file errors out during the stage process, maybe, uh, maybe something's changed about the layout of that file, for example, and we can't, and the profile is no longer valid. Then we want to move it to a different location. So we know that we need to take a look at that file and figure out how to deal with the problem. And my error location is going to be F file YouTube slash um, fail. And that's it. So now I have an Excel file and um, I'm not going to say this because I've already got this in, uh, in use. If I look at where I have that Excel file, that's the next thing that's important. So I put my Excel file in this configuration folder, um, uh, which is just my C leapfrog BI source YouTube configuration folder. And then the file name is MFS YouTube XLS. So if I go back over to leapfrog BI, and um, I'm going to just show you the multi-file stage component that I've already created. It'll be a little quicker. So I'm selecting the multi-file stage component. I called it MFS underscore YouTube. There's nothing here. There's no details here with the exception of the name of the component and the location of the, um, the, uh, the template we just filled out. And that's defined right here as this Excel connection. So if I go over to this MFS YouTube connection, which I also created, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to select my MFS YouTube connection. I can see, if I scroll down here, for my development environment, it's located in the, at the location that I've specified. Um, so, uh, so now LeapFrog BI knows where that template location is. And in the template, it says, here's all the multi-file stage processes I want you to carry out. Okay, so now we have a multi-file stage process set up that's going to collect all of our reports. There's one more thing we need to deal with. And that is the, the metadata that we collected, specifically all of the object data, the video, uh, the playlist, and the channel data. Again, our console application is collecting this for us and putting it into a relational database. So um, I'm not going to go through all the steps here, but it's pretty simple. Um, if you have used LeapFrog BI at all in the past, you know you just need to profile this table. And then again, you'll create a stage component based on that profile which I've done here. I'll jump back over to this. I've called this profile. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, let me go to the stage area. I was looking at connections and I called it dimension members. I called it dimension members because in this source table, we have three different types of objects. We have videos, playlists, and channels. Well, I don't really want to co-mingle them into the same dimension in my um, target model. At least I don't think I do yet. So what I did is I staged them all as a single stage component. I've put them into PSA as a single PSA component. And then I've in created individual data flows for each of their dimensions. So I'll have a dimension for channel, a dimension for videos, and a dimension for playlists. That makes it very simple um, whenever I'm trying to... Um, look at the model. It's very understandable. If I go to the video dimension, I know it's videos and so on. And I also just use standard design patterns um, for each of these different uh, data flows. Um, let me look at, uh, I'll show you that real quick. So that if I look at the patterns, the pattern that I use is the DP1001. And the reason I use that pattern is, of course, I'm starting from a stage component and then I'm moving into a dimension. Um, but I, um, I, I don't need to verify the grain because I know that I'm never going to have more than one object ID with the same, um, at the same point in time. Excuse me, I'm not going to have more than one record with the same object ID at the same point in time. That can't happen because of the nature of the data here. So I don't need to verify the granularity of the data, which is why I chose to use DP1001. The other thing I had to do um, so that I didn't actually create three separate um, PSAs here is I had to add a filter to my downstream component that collects data out of PSA to only collect the appropriate records. 
So for example, here I'm looking at the playlist data flow. If I look at the component detail here, I'll see that in the filter area, I've added an additional condition that says the object equals the word playlist. And again, that's because if I jump back over to my, my actual data, we actually created this object field in our console application and we named the objects by their type. So if I scroll down here and make this a little bigger, it's pretty small. We do have an object type of playlist as well as video and channel. So in Link for BI, I just simply added a filter that was appropriate for the particular dimension I was trying to load so that only that type of object was being loaded into that type of dimension. All right, we now have um, all of our, um, our three dimensions, channel, um, uh, playlist, and video created. Um, the last thing I did here was I went ahead and created a date dimension, which is, um, of course, pretty straightforward. There's a, um, um, a template in Leapfrog BI that you can just ask for a date dimension to be generated. No source data is needed here. You just go create new dimension select the type of dimension you want to create. I wanted to create a date dimension and you fill out the form. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'll show you how I created my date dimension. Um, you may want to do it a little differently. In fact, if you already have a date dimension, you probably don't want to create a new date dimension. You want to reuse it. Um, but in my case, I'm going ahead and, and I'm going to load a date dimension here, um, at least initially until I better understand the data and I want to integrate this into my, um, um, my warehouse, my bus architecture. Okay, so all I did was pretty much took the standard options for my date dimension. I am using a smart key as my surrogate key. So my surrogate key on this date dimension will be a 112 format, which is year, 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 month, month, day, day. It'll be an integer of that form. Um, everything else is pretty standard. I'm going to preload it in a static manner for uh, one record per day from 1975 to 2025. And then I went ahead and selected a standard set of attributes to include in this date dimension. Okay, at this point, our project is complete. We're ready to deploy. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to deploy our project and load our YouTube reporting files into our target database.